There being none, it is now time for members' statements. Member from Huron Bruce. Very much, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today to applaud over 540 volunteers, family, and friends who helped organize the 66th annual Turkey Supper in Belgrave this past month. Belgrave is my home hamlet, if you will. I was lucky enough to be home along with over a thousand others from our broader community to share a delicious Thanksgiving meal. And I can tell you, over a thousand pounds of turkey, 1,600 pounds of potatoes, 224 turnips. 1,080 pies. There was surely no shortage of excellent food, and in fact, there was even second helpings of dessert. But seeing people come together for a tradition like this, unlike any other, is truly humbling. It so clearly emulates what it is to be a community, and I'm honoured to be part of that. To give you a sense of this community, Belgrave is a hamlet of approximately 200 people, and it says a lot that in 2014, they can attract a larger community of over 1,000 people to give thanks and celebrate the bounty of the harvest. This community support is truly valued because it is the one key fundraising event of the year for the Belgrave Community Centre. As a member of this house, I have the honour of meeting and interacting with so many volunteers and organizations across my riding and province, and seeing the passion, selflessness and generosity of these individuals day in and day out is truly remarkable. Volunteers are the cornerstones of our community, and we would not have amazing events like the Belgrave Fell Supper, if it weren't for them, and I thank them. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Members' statements. The member from Parkdale, High Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I know um, that our leaders are coming in in a few minutes to speak, uh, but I just wanted to, to say, because I know we're all thinking the same thing, um, a, a real great vote of thanks to our incredible sergeant at arms and to all of our security uh, staff here uh, i know that we're feeling their presence and that many, many members are saying thank you to them in their own ways and we should probably do that more often than on today so i just wanted to say thank you to them um, and give them a round of applause actually thank you sarge uh, i also wanted to mention i'm a united church minister as many folk know and uh, today on Twitter, I was absolutely moved by the incredible outflowing from all of our faith organizations, all faiths across this country, calling for calm, calling for peace, and calling for love. Thank you. Thank you. Members' statements. The member from Brampton, Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I've had the opportunity over the past few weeks to attend a, a number of Diwali celebrations, also known as the Festival of Lights, which is celebrated by the Sikh, Hindu, and Jain communities. Diwali ushers in new beginnings and is a time to celebrate with family and friends. Diwali is celebrated in many ways through prayer and worship, the lighting of candles, and a, gra a grand feast, but most of all, it is a time to be with loved ones and be thankful for what we have. It was wonderful to see all the families that came together in our community to celebrate. I would like to specifically thank the Premier for joining us in attending the 34th annual Diwali Gala organized by the Canadian Mu Museum of Hindu Civilization. It was fantastic to have her in Brampton. I've also had the opportunity to attend the South Asian Focus and Indo-Canadian Art Council's Diwali Festival of Lights. It was a great event and I'm fortunate to be a part of it. Speaker, we've also had the opportunity to celebrate Diwali here at Queen's Park. It was a success and a wonderful time to share this festification with my fellow colleagues and their guests. I want to wish everyone a very safe and happy Diwali. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm proud to rise today to recognize the work of organizers of the Shabbat Project, a unique international grassroots Jewish identity movement that unites all Jews to observe one full Shabbat together. As the sun sets this Friday evening, Jewish people around the world will come together to observe Shabbat, the Jewish Sabbath, a day of rest. Jews from all walks of life and all corners of the world will unite to celebrate Shabbat in accordance with Jewish law. The Shabbat Project was introduced in South Africa in 2013. Following its success, the International Shabbat Project was born. It now has 1,500 partners in 340 cities around the world. One of the unique aspects of the initiative is that all fractional identities, all denominations, affiliations, ideologies, and yes, even political differences are put to the side. The tagline of the Shabbat Project is keeping it together. This Thursday, I am privileged to take part in one of the GTA community events. 
I, along with 3,000 women across the GTA, many from my own riding of Thornhill, will be participating in a challah bake. Challah is a ritual bread eaten on the Sabbath evening. I look forward to sharing in this most commendable experience. I thank the many volunteers and grassroots community organizers for their tireless efforts in preparation for this Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Member statements. The member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. Today, as the House will know, the Ombudsman released his report on his investigation into unlicensed childcare in Ontario, an investigation I called for in January of last year. I had intended to use my statement today to comment on that significant and important report. However, due to the events in Ottawa this morning, those comments will be made at a later time. And I would like to use this statement to express my condolences and support for those directly affected by the situation in our nation's capital. As Remembrance Day approaches, today we are reminded of the dangers faced by our armed forces, and in this case, right here in our own country. I understand the soldier who died this morning was a reservist from my hometown of Hamilton. I am shocked by this event, and I extend my sincere condolences to his friends, family and colleagues. Also today, members of the Police Association of, of Ontario are visiting Queen's Park, and I had the pleasure of meeting with some of them from the Hamilton Police Service. We often take their presence for granted, and it is time like this that we truly appreciate the job they do and remember that their job is to put themselves in danger's way to serve and protect us. They deserve our sincere gratitude. As elected representatives, we think with concern of our colleagues in Ottawa. We stand with them to uphold our democratic traditions and to ensure the important work we do on behalf of the people who sent us here continues. Thank you. Thank you, Member Stevens. Member from Glengarry, Prescott, Russell. Thank you, Speaker. It's with a heavy heart that I rise today to honour a good friend, a wonderful husband and family man, and an honourable local leader. In the early morning hours of Saturday, October 18th, Jean-Paul St. Pierre passed away peacefully at his home in Russell, Ontario. My heart and the hearts of everyone who crossed paths with JP, as everyone and most of us called him, were deeply saddened upon hearing the news. Our thoughts and prayers immediately turned to his wife Jocelyn and his family. It's near impossible to comprehend the feeling of loss for them during this difficult time. Johnny, as I heard her call him on many occasions, was a true gentleman in every sense of the word. As mayor of Russell Township, as warden of the United Counties of Prescott Russell, and as chair of the Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus, he led with compassion, respect, and understanding. These qualities which he brought to his public life were mirrored in his personal life as well. He was always warm and kind, always willing to listen or help, and his doors were always open. He was very generous. He was passionate about the game of golf. He was one of the top golfers in Glengarry Prescott Russell, and I will always regret that I never did have the opportunity to join him on the golf course. Alongside the residents of Russell Township in the United Counties of Prescott, Russell, I want to offer my sincere condolences to Jocelyn and her family. We've lost a wonderful person, a strong leader, and a true gentleman. We love a true gentleman, a true leader, and he was a friend. Merci. Member statements? Member statements? The uh, member from uh, Halton. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to tell you about a special program in Halton, but before I start, I just want to let you know that our thoughts and prayers are with our friends, neighbours, family and colleagues in Ottawa during this very difficult and challenging time. Um, this is a time for all of us to come together, and we have in this House, and I want to uh, once again emphasize that our thoughts are with uh, our, our colleagues and friends in Ottawa. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to tell you about a very special program in Halton. For 10 years, a small team of volunteers have been gathering once a week in schools, gyms, churches and halls in my riding and surrounding areas to pack boxes. 
Now, these aren't ordinary boxes. These are containers chock full of the precious vegetables Halton has to offer. It's all part of a terrific initiative called the Halton Fresh Food Box Program. I recently dropped into a 10-year anniversary celebration for this great program. For a decade, this wonderful initiative has been providing need needy Halton families with tasty, delectable, locally grown, fresh veggies. The idea is to get young families and those in need of assistance, like seniors, newcomers and the less fortunate, access to the best produce grown in our backyards. The program is funded in part by the Ontario Trillium Foundation. The Halton Fresh Food Box program makes it easier for residents in our community to put healthy, nutritious and delicious food on the table. And that's important because when the food on our plates is from our own backyards, it not only tastes better, but it keeps our communities, families and our local economies healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Member the Member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, uh, just last week uh, in Kitchener, Waterloo, the 36th annual Oktoberfest concluded after nine long days of uh, uh, the Bavarian Festival, which is the largest uh, Bavarian festival in North America outside of, of course, uh, next to the largest uh, Bavarian festival in uh, Munich, Germany. Over the course of the nine days, uh, tens of thousands of people uh, experience uh, truly what it's like to be uh, German in Kitchener, Waterloo, with a strong tradition of uh, German culture culture in the region of Waterloo. Uh, $22 million is generated through its economic impacts uh, throughout the nine days of the festival, raising millions of dollars for not-for-profit chari charitable organizations uh, within the community. And Speaker, this couldn't uh, have happened without the uh, resolve uh, and dedication of the hundreds of volunteers uh, that work year-round to ensure that uh, Oktoberfest is one of the uh, best and brightest festivals uh, in Ontario. I had the pleasure of attending uh, opening ceremonies bright and early on Friday morning. I was uh, honoured to be attended and joined by our, in our interim leader, uh, Jim Wilson, who uh, participated in uh, this year's uh, keg tapping festivities. Uh, but again, I'd like to thank the volunteers uh, for its uh, 36 years of success uh, and um, prost. And tell them about your leader. <laughs> thank you. Member Statements, the member from Northumberland, Quinty West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it's my pleasure to stand before the House today and share my experiences as a guest at a full-day kindergarten classes at St. Anthony's Catholic Elementary School in Port Hope. I'd like to thank Principal Egan, Ms. Rackas, and Ms. McAllister, who were delightful hosts and provided me the opportunity to meet their classes of clever and energetic kindergarten students. St. Anthony's one of 32 schools in my, in my writing that offer full-day kindergarten. In the words of Principal Egan, this program supports the philosophy of developing the whole person by establishing a strong foundation for the early years by providing young children play-based learning experience. This enables them to make a smooth transition to grade one and to improve their pro prospect of success in their li lives beyond school. And a more school good news, uh, Speaker, Tomorrow afternoon, I will have the pleasure of welcoming to the legislature uh, students from grade four and five of Ms. Morrison from VP Carswell's Elementary School in Trenton and Mr. Milligan's grade 10 civic class from Camberford High School. It's always a pleasure to introduce young minds to new experiences and adventures. Thank you, Speaker. And it's a I uh, thank all members for their statements. I appreciate them. And now I'm, I think I'm going to turn to the member.